Yes, so the, the goal of this uh, first part is to talk about uh, the Faculty of Informatics at the University of Lugano and also talk about our master program. And then about, uh, about uh, when you had enough, about six, then we will switch over to the lecture on computational science by Professor Pifkin. And then after that, we will switch back to my lecture on service-oriented computing with resource-oriented architectures. So uh, to tell you where we come from, first of all, this is Switzerland. It's in the middle of Europe where we have the the Alps. And uh, Switzerland is an interesting country because it's made of uh, people that speak four different languages. Uh, this is the part where people are close to France, so they speak French. This is the German speaking part where Zurich is. And then we come from the south, the sunny side, where people actually speak Italian. Yeah? So it's a very small country. You can cross it in about two and a half, three hours if you go fast. Um, and uh, we are in, in the south, and uh, you probably know the polytechnical schools, the ETH Zurich, EPF, EPF Lausanne, located over here. Well, we are the third largest school in computer science in terms of research uh, activities. Now, uh, the University of Lugano and the Faculty of Informatics in particular is very new. We started in 2004. That's why a lot of people do not know about us yet. But here we have a, already a established a tradition of coming to St. Petersburg. So probably not, it's not a big news that we, we exist. But uh, probably an update is that uh, we are now 22 professors, more than 100 PhD, PhD students and postdocs, and about 250 bachelor master students that come to study computer science. So we have a three-year bachelor program plus a two-year master program, and then a between three and six years PhD program. We distinguish ourselves as an excellent place to do informatics research. We have worldwide world, uh, known researchers in various fields. And we also have an innovative new curriculum to study computer science, uh, which I will talk a little bit more in detail about the master part. Uh, these are the areas in which we do research within informatics, within computer science. So we have an Institute of Computational Science from which Professor Pifkin comes from, and he will give you more details. Uh, we will do work in uh, computer systems. In particular, I will talk about service-oriented computing. Today, we have also uh, people working in geometric and visual computing, in particular computer graphics. I think there are also some PhD positions there. We have also some people working in information systems, in particular information retrieval, ACI. Uh, intelligent systems, there is an institute called ITSIA that is uh, working on machine learning. They're very good with uh, pattern recognition, neural networks, and so on. Uh, we also have programming languages people doing, of course, compilers and program verification, for example, like uh, Professor Sarigina or Natasha here. Uh, we also have uh, quite large group of people working in software engineering as well as uh, theory and algorithm. And one of the recent additions to the faculties was a professor working, for example, in quantum, quantum computing, quantum information and security. So these are some of the, the people that we, we are. Uh, these are the Computational Science Institute, and uh, later you will hear more about them. Uh, you might have heard about some of those names. These are the software engineering people. Uh, for example, there is Professor Yatsayeri, who started the whole faculty in 2004. He's a well-known professor in uh, software engineering and programming languages. There is also Carlo Ghezzi, who is affiliated with us. He's based in Politecnico di Milano in Italy, but he comes to teach uh, at our faculty. And this is uh, Mauro Pezzeo, our current dean, who is also an expert in software engineering, and is the chair of this year's ICSI conference, in, in which will be in Zurich uh, in a couple of weeks. And we also have Professor Lanza, who works in software evolution and software visualization. He has a very strong group in, the, in this area. Uh, there is me, who are working more uh, service-oriented architecture, soft, software architecture, and various other things. Uh, Professor Hauswirth, in, an expert in software performance. Uh, Nate Nist, uh, Nystrom is uh, an expert in programming languages. He's starting uh, a group called the Lugano Language Lab, or the Lambda Group. And also Professor Natasha Sharjina, who works in software verification. 
I also wanted to include uh, other people that I mentioned. They have positions uh, in addition to Professor Nistrom, also Professor Hauswirt and Professor Binder are looking for, for students. And you may want to look them up on the, on the website uh, and find how to contact them if, if you're interested in, in their topic. Yeah. Uh, we are not a hierarchically partitioned faculty in different institutes. We are actually, uh, you know, tag ourselves with different topics. And in this case, you will see that some of the people that work in software engineering are again here, and they also do systems work. So we work at the intersection of different areas. Um, okay, so now let's talk a little bit more in detail about the master and the master program that we offer. It's a two-year master program in different areas of specialization. And here there is also some information about not just the master program of computer science of the informatics faculty, but all of the different faculties of the University of Lugano, which in addition to computer science, they also include economics, communications, and architecture. So there you will have a very broad view of the whole university. Um, so now it's the point where I skip some of the slides. So why study a master? Well, if you uh, in, in Switzerland, we have the so-called 3 plus 2 system, where people do a three-year degree in the Bachelor of Computer Science, and then they can continue and specialize themselves in an ad additional two years. Yeah? So our master is open to anybody that has a bachelor degree from a recognized mm -hmm. university in computer science, but also mathematics, physics, electrical engineering, and similar disciplines. Yeah? So we attract students coming from all over the world that have this uh, basic foundation, especially in computer science, and then they can specialize and get additional knowledge, additional in-depth knowledge on different areas. So the idea is that you, you start from a bachelor from somewhere, probably from here, then you can come to Lugano and do a two-year, 120 CTS means four semesters, 30 per semester. Um, and then after that, you can start your professional career. Uh, Switzerland has a um, growing and fast, fast growing and a huge uh, job market in IT. Yeah. A lot of uh, companies are based in Switzerland. They are looking for computer science, and they have a hard time finding Swiss people that uh, know the discipline. Uh, we also have students that uh, started their own companies. So in uh, Switzerland, is also a good place to, to do a startup. Uh, and then there is also possibility to do a shorter master in applied informatics, so-called, which basically is only one year and a half. And what is ECTS? Oh, ECTS is credits. It's uh, basically a unit of, of, of work that you have to put into a lecture to, to learn it. So one semester, uh, three months of lecture is 30 ECTS. And classes go between three CTS, the small ones, uh, six, normal, regular size, and we also have nine ECTS classes. Does so it directly correlate to time or some, uh, or some other way? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be correlating to the time that you put into both lecture time and work to, to study, yes. It's, it w it's a system that is introduced in Europe so that to make easy to exchange people between universities because you can go to another place and you get credits in ECTS and then you come back to your home and you can find equivalents. Uh, I guess it's a different system here. But um, there can also be done, there is also some exchange rate that you <laughs> can apply to, to compute uh, your own, your own equivalent. <laughs> Yeah, but usually the students usually lose with it. But uh, in principle, this, this will be two years. This is one year and a half, just, just so you know. Um, now, if you do a full master in informatics, you can also stay and, and do a PhD in informatics. Yeah? So to start the PhD, the admission requirement is that you have already have a master. Yes. Uh, we rarely made exceptions for people that had a four-year bachelor to come to do the PhD. But in general, we expect people to have successfully completed their master, not at the time when they apply to come to do the PhD, but when they start. Uh, okay, so this is uh, just the overview. Uh, the idea of, of the master, it's an innovative curriculum that combines both theoretical work with practical work. Yeah, so you can study about lectures, but also apply what you learn in the context of projects and team, team projects as well. Uh, the goal is to learn 
how to become a professional that will never stop learning. In computer science, unfortunately, all the technology becomes obsolete uh, every in internet time, every you know, 12, 18 months, everything changes. And so how can you become uh, technically skilled in something that will be obsolete by the time you graduate? Yeah. So the, the trick is that you want to learn not some particular technology, but you want to learn how to learn, how to keep up to date uh, with, with new emerging technologies. And this is what we try to do in the, in the university, right? To, to give you those those skills, as well as uh, soft skills. Yeah? As, a, as a computer scientist, you more and more find work at the boundary, together with some other discipline. Yeah? You go and work for a bank in Switzerland. You need to know both a good computer scientist and a financial expert, yeah? or you need to at least understand what the financial, the business people are talking about. So uh, the goal of the master is to be able to learn how to do this translation between the business domain, the application domain, which can be anything, and the computer science skills that can implement the IT system supporting any kind of application. Um, so how, how is the curriculum designed? There is a foundation at the beginning, which is a common semester, one semester. Then we have a specialization, which is about one year, made up of one semester of core courses and one semester of electives that you can pick, whatever you want, when you are on interest. And then there is a final semester with a thesis project yeah, that you can go and work on a project with some professor. And some, some of these are also research oriented. So you can actually uh, collaborate and join a research group and do some research. Uh, these are the courses, if you're interested, that we put in the, in the foundation. Every computer science master should know these things. Algorithms and complexity, programming languages, distributed systems, software engineering, intelligent systems. Of course, it's difficult to pick uh, the right foundation courses, but that's the choice we made so far. Um, in terms of the specialization, uh, basically, after you do the first common semester, you choose which way you want, and you have to get at least 30 CTS in the core courses. And these are the various specialization that you can get. So we have a specialization in software design. We're really focused on uh, how do you architect, design, evolve, and test and verify complex large-scale software systems. We have a master specialized in dependable distributed systems. Yeah. A distributed system is a, is a system that fails because a component you never heard of failed somewhere on the internet. And the goal of this master is to really learn how to uh, build these effective distributed systems that are nowadays found everywhere. Also, people look at challenges related to mobile computing, cloud computing, and, and so on. We have a master in, in, we call them intelligent systems, systems based on artificial intelligence. There's also a master in applied mathematics and computational science. And uh, a new master, this is the newest one that we added, in geometric and visual computing, which uh, has both uh, theoretical applications, uh, theoretical uh, foundations in um, geometry, mathematics, and also practical application in computer graphics, computer vision, and various topics. Yeah, this is the thesis at the end, after you do the various courses. You, there is many possibilities. You can do a thesis that is more research-oriented. You can also do projects with local industry. A lot of students go out with do the thesis in companies, and then they get a job and continue working for the same company. Um, OK, so getting to the end. Basically, this is the, the fees that are required to enroll in the in this master program. And then, of course, you if you are good, you can apply to get scholarships who will cover the entire costs of the study, so you can get uh, basically, every year you apply, and you can get uh, a scholarship that co covers the annual uh, tuition fee, and then you can extend it for the full two years, basically, if you do well in the first year. Uh, and I think we you want to say something, Wari, because we also have good experience in the past. Uh, right. So also, uh, as maybe some of you know, so before the open scholarship, there was a scholarship for the participants in the degree sessions. If you want But you still have 
are interested in a master's program and you pass this exam, we uh, offer you an opportunity. We will guarantee that we will recommend you strongly to get the scholarship. And most likely it will happen. So that's the story. Also, I would like to add the following. So it should be very clear for you that we have two graduate programs. One is for master students, as Cesare just presented, with a lot of classes and projects and so on. And then there is something uh, more advanced, which builds on the top of masters, which is a PhD program. And for that, actually, all PhD students get a research assistantship. Once you get admitted to a PhD program, you get a salary as an assistant to your professor. And that we also advertise, and we do have a PhD position available right now from several professors. And if you're interested in doing so, you should make it very clear and figure out how to work it out. So in this case, there is no tuition at all. Yes. So this is the other way around. You are going to work as an assistant, and then you will be paid. So the salary is quite good. Okay? Yes. Yeah, first you have to pay to do the master and then to do the PhD and you get the money back. <laughs> but uh, the PhD salary is much bigger anyway than the master tuition fee. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh yes, this was also some more uh, recent uh, piece of news that uh, the, the whole master curriculum and also bachelor program that we have at the university was uh, awarded this very prestigious award from the ACM. Uh, this year, so this is a recognition of the quality and also the innovation degree that that was put into designing the whole curriculum. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just uh, one slide taken out of the presentation of the master in software design that basically tells you that in in Switzerland, both at the level of IT companies, vendors, uh, there is lots of research labs going on in the country, and also. There are more uh, business-specific companies that are actually the largest IT employers in, in Switzerland. Yeah? Um, banks, in reality, work like software companies. Yeah? They write their own banking in Switzerland. They write their own s banking software by themselves. Yeah? And so they have very large software development and maintenance organizations uh, that uh, require a lot of manpower to, to keep all the systems uh, running and extend them with, uh, you know, there is always new technology that comes out that needs to be used. Um, and so there is also a lot of opportunities there to directly work with banks or to consult with them and, and so on. Uh, and we do have students that graduated from our programs that are now working for all of these companies, you know, both in Switzerland and also in the U.S. So that's what I want to say. So to summarize this part, and then I will uh, hand it over to Professor Pifkin, if, you, if you're ready. Otherwise, I can keep talking. For <laughs> OK. So basically, uh, another thing that I haven't said is that everything we do in Lugano in computer science is in English. Yeah? So you might worry that, oh, you have to come to the Italian speaking part of Switzerland, and you don't speak Italian. But it's OK, because the language that we work on, we do research, and we teach from the first year of our program is in English. So we attract quite an international crowd of students. It's uh, the, out of all the university in Switzerland, the University of Lugano is the newest and is also the most international. We have the most nationalities of students that come uh, there from all over the world. I already mentioned that the master curriculum has been awarded, some prestigious awards. There is a very broad spectrum of offerings, right? You go from intelligent systems to computer graphics to software, hardcore software engineering to computational science, yeah? So you can find a lot of different areas of specialization. We are part of a growing and quite nice uh, Erasmus exchange network, right? So once you become a student with us, you have access also to travel and do exchanges with many different universities in Europe. Uh, in terms of research and opportunities for the PhD program, we are now the third uh, informatics research faculty in the country. So we are in terms of both the, the size and the, the budget that we have available. Uh, our instructors are, are really good. They really care about the quality of the teaching. And there is a very good ratio between the number of professors and the number of students. Yeah? So we, we're not a university where you, you give a class and in front of you, you have 100, 200 people. In Lugano, we have more like, you know, 20, 30, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a rather smaller 
kind of audience, which makes a different kind of relationship. And at the end, you really know how the students are, go are doing. And you have very, very good interactions. Also, we take student valuation seriously. Yeah? So at the end of every semester, people have to fill out evaluations. We don't throw them away. We actually look at them. We rank ourselves. And we also get very good feedback that we take into account. Also, every student uh, that starts with us gets a MacBook. So this is, we do not have any student lab in the university. There is no place where you can go work with a computer, you get a laptop. And then you can work wherever you want. And there is Wi-Fi. And so that's, I think that's it. Yes. So that's what I want to say to introduce the master program to you. Do you have any questions? Are you more interested in the PhD program or in the master program? Yeah, Both? Okay, so. And the are just curious, right? Interested in the lectures. Ah, that's awesome. It's actually good. Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah, so to, to apply for a PhD, there is like two, two year deadlines. So we select the uh, people twice a year. The, the last one was May 1st to start in September. And then there is another one in November, I think, to start in uh, February, March, in the spring, basically. But if you are in a hurry to start and you really want to start in September, mm -hmm. there's still a chance that you, know, you, you talk to us and then you can also get in, inside this batch of applications. Right. 